In the previous video we learned binary lifting in order to quickly go to ancestors in a tree. Today we will use it to find, again very efficiently in logarithmic time, lowest common ancestor of two nodes or two vertices in the given tree. If you didn't watch the previous video, go watch that first, you need to know binary lifting. And here I only use that definition we had, that app of vj is the ancestor of v at proper power of 2. And what we see is just implementation of DFS, where for every node of uh, a tree, we go through its children and we update their parent and all the ancestors, second, fourth, eighth, sixteenth, and so on, and we run DFS for that guy. What's hidden here is just reading the input for this particular problem. Link to the problem is in the description. So you could always, so you could also just implement the solution later and submit to check if you got everything right. What's the lowest common ancestor? We need to define that uh, first. Well, ancestors for a node, ancestors are everything in the path to the root. And common, the first common ancestor or lowest common ancestor is this guy here. It's for A and B. If they go up, where can they meet first? If A goes, the, follows this path, B follows this path, then this is the first common point. This is called LCA lowest common ancestor. How do we find that with brute force? Well, we can keep going up. Maybe first let's move with A to uh, make A and B to be on the same level, the same depth. And now, once they are on the same level, here A and here B, then just move them at the same time up until they meet. So move A and B to the parent, then move those to the parent, and eventually they will be in the same vertex. Let's quickly implement this but it's not efficient enough, it's just linear. Uh, let's assume that A is deeper, because I want to say this. Well, depth of A is bigger, A is parent of A, and using our notation that's up of A0, this is how you move by one up. Uh, but I don't want to repeat the same code for the case when B is deeper, so I will swap them in some case. If B is deeper, just swap. So no matter how I later change it, I can always assume A is the deeper vertex, unless they are on the same level. Uh, then uh, while they are not the same, move them both up at the same time. And then they are in the same vertex, that's the LCA. We need the depth here. So let's create it. Uh, when you see with in DFS, from vertex you go to a child, the depth of a child is by one bigger. If, for example, if depth here is, uh, maybe that one doesn't have children, if this one, the depth is two, then for all the children we need to say the depth is three. Nothing complicated about that part and then we can use depth. Cool, we are done with solution in linear complexity if the tree is not balanced. Actually this is all of depth of the tree, but that's limited by the number of nodes in the tree. And what's the better solution? We have two independent parts that are both linear, this one to make the depth equal, and this one to uh, grab two nodes in the same depth and move them at the same time up. And uh, there is more than one way to speed this up, but we will go with the one heavily relying on binary lifting. Later, we will learn also pre-order, post-order, and then it's easier to check if one vertex is ancestor of the other, but not today. The first part is very standard. We already saw in the previous video how to find cave ancestor. And what we're doing here is if as k I denote the difference of depth, uh, depth of A, minus depth of B, then I need to go up from A K times. That's the previous video. Uh, how do we go up by K? We can iterate over all the powers decreasingly and look at binary representation of K. Uh, if this, then A is up. This is code from the previous video. All right, I moved with A to be on the same level as B. I hope I didn't mess this up. And then 
There is a possibility that A and B are already the same vertex. And that would happen if, let's say that we start with A here and B there, or the other way around, because they would be swapped. Then when you move A to be on the same level as B, then A is already the same as B. And normally we don't need extra ifs in code, if the code anyway handles all the cases, but it will turn out that here we need one. If A is equal to B, return A. And this is because of what will happen later. So late at the end I will talk about this if and why this was necessary here. Uh, but otherwise, if this is not the case, then we need to move them up at the same time. Maybe you already guessed that we will use powers of 2, because that's what binary lifting does. And again, we will start from using big powers of 2. I will consider moving A and B both first by 4 up. That's the biggest power of 2 here. So I will consider that maybe LCA is the 4 units away, or actually that LCA is more than 4, four units away something like that. When we, from A and B, both look at the fourth ancestor, it must be the same. It doesn't need to be the same, but here it is the same. And it's above the LCA, so we shouldn't go there. Uh, this is some idea. So maybe we will have, again, this for loop over powers of 2 decreasingly. And now, if they are not the same, or actually if they are the same, uh, then we will do something, hopefully. Uh, well, we shouldn't go there. We will jump over LCA, so this is bad. What about the next power of two? So what if they look at their second ancestors? This is LCA and we know it by looking at the drawing, but how can the program know it? If it compares, if second ancestor of A and B is the same, then well, so what? This was also the same. So what about we still skip this? And only here when we look at the first ancestor, so just the parent, we said that they are different. So we go there. A, B, A uh, now gets here and B gets there. Does that make any sense? So if they are different, then move them to those ancestors. They are still on the same level, just closer to LCA. Here's the thing. This code, it gets as close to LCA as possible. And we will see in a moment a bigger example uh, to better understand the code. But it's guaranteed that after this for loop is done, we are, the A and B are different, still different, but they are both, they are both children of LCA. So here I can return the parent of A or parent of B, both would work. But bigger example will be better to understand that. Uh, maybe first some kind of abstract thing. Uh, that we as a human, we see the drawing, right? If the tree is very small. But computer doesn't look at the whole thing at once, at just a single thing. If we have A here and B there, and there are some long paths up. And we, let's say, consider eighth parent or sorry, eighth ancestor, and we get information that eighth ancestor of A is here node number 17, and eighth ancestor of B is here node number 50. So there was some kind of path here. Then LCA must be still above. So this is why we uh, overwritten A and B, over, we overwrote A and B, because we still didn't jump over LCA. Still LCA is above. And we will use smaller powers of 2 to get even sm closer to LCA. But on the other hand, consider that you checked 8th ancestor of A and B, and it turned out that both are 17. So they are the same vertex. It doesn't need to be LCA. This is just information that LCA is either 17, or it's a bit lower than 17. Maybe, maybe the tree looks like this. Binary lifting is some version, I don't know if that's eight. Uh, binary lifting is some version of binary search. It just deals with powers of two. And we get information, oh, you try to go up by eight, you're too far away, or maybe exactly at LCA. 
just like in binary search, you say, if this is the case, go left. If this is the case, go up. Here it's the same. We just go, um, instead of left, right, we go up or down. If they are different, like 17 and 50, we know that LCA is up, so we keep going there. Otherwise, we want to be down, so we don't go there. That's the idea. And now the big example. What will the code we see here, along with everything there, uh, do for this big example? First, we grab the difference of depths between A and B. This is just one, so this part is trivial. A will move up by one. A will get there. So let's we'll just um, make a new drawing for that. OK, A is here. Now they will start from using big powers of two. Oh, and I need to talk about this if. So you see, uh, I told you that they are at the end children of LCA, both A and B. And if A was equal to B here, because B was ancestor of A, then this would be very wrong because we would return parent of LCA. If you remove this if, this is parent of LCA because they were already equal here. Uh, this part would do nothing. And you would go up one extra time to parent of LCA. Uh, this is why the if is necessary. Uh, back to the example. Maybe we first start from some big powers of two because this is just here hard coded logarithm of n around it up. And uh, yeah, uh, if ancestor doesn't exist, then my code will just take the root. Assuming that parent of the root is the root itself, then this is how the code behaves. If I see that going up 32 times or 16 times just points here, then this is equal. So I shouldn't go there because I know that I might jump over the LCA that I'm looking for. So I don't want to go there. This is why I skip that. Eventually I get eighth ancestor. The eighth ancestor of A is actually again this guy. Eighth ancestor of B is also the root. So nothing will happen. I don't want to go there because I only go up and I don't want to jump over the LCA. Then I consider the next power of two, that's four. Look from, from A, four times up, from B, four times up. Those are two different vertices. So this code, uh, this if is true. And we go here inside. Now A gets here, B gets there. And then next power of two is two. Um, so from A we look there and from B we look there. That's the same vertex. Yes, I see as a human that this is LCA, but only because I see the surrounding. I see the children, I see the parent. The vertex is the same. So for the program as well, maybe they are looking at parent of LCA or somebody even higher than that. They see somebody here. Whenever they see the same ancestor, it means for the program that will go there. That's bad. I don't want to go there. Instead, I want to just in those two paths before LCA, I want to go high to the last vertex, to the child of LCA. So yeah, we don't go here by two because that's the same vertex for both A and B. And the last power of two, so the last iteration of this for loop for J equal to zero, we look at the parent. The smallest power of two is just one. Those are different vertices. So I overwrite A is here and B is there. And we finish. And we return parent of A. We could also return parent of B. It would also be fine. So, yeah. uh, again, another way to look at it is that we binary search because we move from A to somewhere here, to from B to somewhere there. We want to avoid, we want to avoid this area. Binary lifting we use to binary search between blue and red part. And at the very end, we will be in the last vertex of the blue part. So here, that's what binary lifting does in finding lowest common ancestor. Now, to make sure that the code is right, let's compile it and submit. Normally, I would also test on the example test before submitting. That's a bit faster. 
you wait quite a few seconds for the judgment but i believe this is fine the code you will find in the description and along with the link to this thing uh, wrong answer i didn't expect that again and yeah uh, here this is not the code from the previous video we iterate with j and it's not that i jump by k because k is some huge value i jump to 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 j ancestor right this is code from the previous video uh, this shouldn't even work for example test i think now i need to edit the video a little bit and put here j yep accept it now so thank you for watching i hope this explanation made lowest common ancestor quite easy easy for you to understand because it's not a difficult algorithm next video sparse tables right thanks bye